So here we're going to take a look at how to calculate the current and voltage drop across each resistor in a simple pure series circuit. So as you can see in this diagram, we have a pure series circuit. There's a 27.5 volt battery, and current will come out of the battery and go clockwise. First it will go through the 30 ohm resistor, then the 10 ohm resistor, then the 15 ohm resistor back to ground where the battery takes it back up to a potential of 27.5 volts. So of course keep in mind the electrons are actually going counterclockwise but we're just going to focus on the current for the purpose of these videos. So let's see how we're going to do this. Well the first thing we need to do is calculate the equivalent resistance of this whole circuit and the current coming out of the battery. So we're going to list our givens. I'm going to call the resistors numbers 1, 2, and 3 just going clockwise starting from the 30 ohm resistor. And so those are some of our givens. And we also have a given that the potential of the battery is 27.5 volts. The electric potential of the battery, or the voltage as we like to say, is 27.5 volts. So in calculating the equivalent resistance for this circuit, we need to recognize which formula are we going to use. Well, remember that the formula for equivalent resistance for resistors that are set up in series is you just add up the individual resistors. So we have three of them, so we do R1 plus R2 plus R3, and that becomes 30 ohms plus 10 ohms plus 15 ohms, which just becomes 55 ohms as the equivalent resistance for this circuit. So now that we know the equivalent resistance, we can use Ohm's law, V equals IR, to find the current coming out of the battery because the voltage drop for the whole circuit, which is just given by the voltage gain that the current would attain by going through the battery, is equal to the current being produced by the battery times the equivalent resistance of the circuit. Just as the voltage drop across each individual resistor or any individual resistor would be given by the current going through that resistor times that resistor's resistance. Well, here it's for the whole circuit. So, we solve for the current coming out of the battery. We just divided both sides of this equation by R to get I equals V over R. And now we're ready to plug in numbers. And you get that there is half an amp, or 0 0.50 amps, of current coming out of the battery. So, because of the fact that the battery is in series with the rest of the circuit, we immediately know the amount of current going through each of these individual resistors. It's the same as that being produced by the battery. In other words, however much current the battery is producing, however much charge per unit time, remember current is charge per unit time, is coming out of here, is also going through these resistors. If that wasn't true, then charge would pile up somewhere, or it would disappear somewhere, and that's there aren't any junctions here for the current to leave out of or anything like that, so it's just a simple loop. So 0.5 amps is the current everywhere in this circuit, including through each of the individual resistors. So now that we know the current in each individual resistor, we can, well, Use V equals IR again to get the voltage drop across each resistor. So, the current again is 0.5 amps, and you might recall that the resistor values were, well, they're in this picture, 30 ohms, 10 ohms, and 15 ohms, and I'm just going to refer to them by their resistor values since this is a simple series circuit. So the voltage drop through the 30 ohm resistor is going to be equal to whatever current's going through the 30 ohm resistor, which remember is 0.5 amps, because that's what's going through everywhere in this series circuit, times the resistance of the 30 ohm resistor. Well, what is the resistance of the 30 ohm resistor? Well, what color is George Washington's white horse? The resistance of the 30 ohm resistor is 30 ohms. And the current traveling through there, as we said, was 0.5 amps. So multiplying those together gives you 15 volts. And I just kind of reminded us of this transitivity of equality here and said that's equal to the voltage drop across the 30 ohm resistor because since that's what we're calculating to begin with. I just put it right here to make it apparent that that's the answer that we are putting in a box. The voltage drop of the 30 ohm resistor is 15 volts. Well, you can do that for each of the other two resistors as well, which each have half an amp of current traveling through them. So here's the result of doing that. You get the voltage drop for the 10 ohm resistor is 5 volts. Again, we did V equals IR. 
the same procedure, and the voltage drop for the 15 ohm resistor is 7.5 volts. So now to figure out the power being dissipated by each resistor, or the power being produced by each resistor, if you want to think of it that way, you use the equation PIV. P equals IV. So you just apply it three times. We know the current going through each resistor. We know the voltage drop across each resistor. We've already calculated or simply known those. So we apply PIV three times. And you get that the power through the 30 ohm resistor, or dissipated by the 30 ohm resistor, is 7.5 volts. The 10 ohm resistor is point, or sorry, 7.5 watts, I should say. The 10 ohm resistor is producing 2.5 watts, and the 15 ohm resistor is producing 3.75 watts. And if somebody was interested in how much power was being generated by this entire circuit, you could either add up all of these numbers, or you could just use PIV for the whole circuit, where I is the current coming out of the battery and V is the voltage drop across the battery, and you would end up getting 13.75 watts either way for the entire the circuit the entire power being produced by the entire circuit. And that would be good to know in case you're trying to interest you're interested in how much energy is actually being consumed from this battery. So that's how you can find the current and voltage drop and equivalent resistance and power for resistors in a pure series circuit. So hopefully that was seemed relatively straightforward. And now we'll move on to looking at it for parallel circuits in the next video. Thank you.